Welcome, friends. Uh, today we are going to do another one of our Saturday morning most watched recipe videos on YouTube series. And I really want to learn how to make a sandwich loaf recipe. So let's see which one is on top. And we'll filter that by view count. And the one that comes up on top is Easy Homemade Sandwich Bread Recipe Made from Scratch. Well, that's what we're looking for, and it's by 15 Spatulas. So let's give it a look. Now this recipe has 408,000 views. Um, so not a lot of people are searching for how to make this type of bread. And we'll take a look at the recipe. Seems pretty standard. Um, but reading through the comments, people seem to have a lot of problems with this recipe. Um, and just on a, on a first glance, I think I know what some of the problems are. So let's get started and we'll figure this out. So the first thing I did with this recipe is I converted everything to uh, weight and metric. Um, and the reason I did that was kind of two or threefold. Um, Cups are a great measurement when you know what size the cup is. And I'm going to put a link to another video that I've done. All around the world, cup sizes aren't the same. So a cup in the United States is different than a cup in Canada or Australia or New Zealand or Japan or Korea. They're all different sizes. So I think it's important um, if you're learning how to bake bread that you do everything by weight when you're starting out when you're starting out. You want it to be exact and you want to know what's going on. So in this pot, I've put milk, it's splashing it all over the place, um, butter, and I'm going to put in two tablespoons of honey. But of course, my tablespoon doesn't fit in my honey pot. Let me, uh, let me take care of that. Okay, and two tablespoons of honey. Now we just want this over low heat. Um, we just want to bring this up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, that is one of the places where a lot of people have had trouble with this recipe. When you read the comments, um, their yeast isn't blooming. And the problem is they're heating this too high, too hot, and it's killing the yeast. So we're going to get around that problem fairly easily. Now, into the bowl of a stand mixer, we put all-purpose flour and salt and this is the first place I'm going to differ from the recipe and this is going to help everyone who didn't get it to rise I'm going to put the yeast into the flour um, so two and a half teaspoons of instant yeast um, this recipe calls for instant yeast Instant yeast doesn't need to be proved. You don't have to dissolve it first. The granule size is really tiny. It's meant to go into the flour and then have the liquid added to it and it's going to dissolve no problem. And it's also guaranteed to be good. So you don't need to prove it ahead of time. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people went wrong in the original recipe in the comment section is that if you heat this to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, take it off the heat and then add the yeast, the heat from the pot, the residual heat in this pot is going to continue to raise the temperature of the liquid beyond where the yeast can survive. So if you take this off at 115 degrees and then pour it into the flour, the temperature is going to drop because of the thermal mass of the flour and blah, 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 blah. And the yeast is going to be just fine. Um, so we give this a bit of a shake or you can stir it with your fingers or your hand and you don't need to worry that there's salt in there with the yeast because the yeast is at this point dry and the salt isn't going to affect it. Um, in fact, I'm going to do another video that I will link to somewhere that will kind of explain that myth away. So we'll just wait for this to come up to temperature and we'll move on. So 111, that's uh, well within range. I think if you can kind of get around 110, you are perfect. Um, there's no risk at that point of killing the yeast. So pour the milk in. And 
and just use your spatula to start bring that together as a dough. Great. So now we put this onto the stand mixer and um, with the dough hook, we need this for about 10 minutes on a medium low speed. Um, on this stand mixer, that's um, somewhere between two and four. That has come together really nicely. So, next up, pull it off and just take the dough hook out. Um, that dough, let's check the temperature of the dough because I'm curious. 95 degrees. Um, I don't think that's significant for this recipe, foot, but, but for a lot of bread recipes, the temperature after kneading is crucial. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get into that with this particular video. So, I'm just gonna put a cover on that and um, let it double in size. Could take anywhere from a half hour to an hour and a half, depending on the temperature in your kitchen. Um, in the recipe video, she says an hour. Let's see. And there you go, just about an hour. And the dough has uh, doubled in size, probably just a little bit more than doubled in size. So the next step is just to very lightly flour your countertop, flour your hands, and you want to turn the dough out onto your worktop. And if you've got one of these dough scrapers, uh, that would make it so much easier. So, now we just want to shape the dough by pressing it out into a rectangle and then folding and pinching. Folding and pinching. Each time you fold it towards you, you just want to pinch it down to make sure that the seam seals. And again, same sort of idea along the bottom. Use the heel of your hand just to pinch the ends. And then we put that into a baking pan. And you just want to cover it over for the final rise of the proof. Um, you could use plastic wrap for sure. I've got a couche, um, so I'll just lay that over top. And this next step should take roughly a half an hour. And in that time period, preheat your oven. All right, so look at that. Beautiful. Well, kind of beautiful. Anyway, so the oven is preheated and I have a cast iron frying pan in the oven that's heated to the same temperature. And I'm just gonna put this boiling water in to create some steam. Put the bread in. And I'll see you in about 40 minutes. Woo! There you go. Bread. Yes. Basic white bread. White bread. Hmm. Smells pretty good. Let's slice that up, Jules. You got a bit of a... Oh yeah, my, my shaping <laughs> still isn't great. Um, there is a... There is a skill. But yeah, there's a skill. Thank you. I'm gonna cut this in half still. Mm. The crust is nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's got that basic kind of somewhat sweet the White interior, bread yeah. yeah. The interior is is light and fluffy. I mean, this is perfect for sandwiches, um, grilled cheese. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a very simple loaf to make. Um, not a whole lot of time. It's just a lot of watching it do stuff. Very easy. 
So I think overall, with those couple of changes that I showed you at the beginning, you will be more successful than the original recipe. But this recipe is something that you find. Are you looking at me? <laughs> You well, got I've, some bread on you. I've, got, I've, been, I've been baking. <laughs> you look like you've been baking. <laughs> okay, let's. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway, so this is this is a this is a, a fairly basic loaf bread recipe um, in hundreds of cookbooks. So follow this, and uh, and you won't be disappointed if that's the type of bread you're looking for. I mean, if you're looking for a pen de campaign. This is not. This is not this it. This is not it. This is not it. This is a sandwich loaf. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.